And yet one thing I have learned in the course of my stupid life is that you don't have to be a person of unblemished moral virtue to do good things. Our ancestors were sinners, every single one of them morally inadequate. And still, they built this country. In a democracy, imperfect humans are the basis of everything. There is no way around this. And if we build a movement in which such people are invited to work together to advance widely shared interests, all things become possible. If we offer them nothing but scolding, we are lost. Look at us today. We liberals are intoxicated with our moral purity. We are determined to root out ideological heresy. We don't build movements these days, we purge them. Canceling and scolding and deplatforming, whittling down the ranks to an ever tinier core of the righteous. We don't get things done by mobilizing the people. We get them done by mobilizing the CEOs, getting them to declare capital strikes against cities and states for their offenses against liberalism. Is there, ask yourself, is there any variety of left politics that is capable of addition rather than, sub, than subtraction, of bringing together Americans from every ancestry, every sex, every religion, instead of driving them apart? And you know there is. And surprise, it's the very same liberalism that we leave off the yard signs. The very same liberalism that 50 years of Democratic Party thinkers told us we shouldn't care about any longer. Because its traditional bearers were these vulgar, uneducated hard hats. Or because globalization, in the brilliance of its futurific wisdom, had consigned it all to history's dustbin. I'm talking about economic democracy. Yes, and I know it is corny to care about things like this, and maybe I'm a sap to be sentimental about the populists and the New Deal and the Great Society, and yet it's a funny thing, folks. A lot of us are saps in exactly that way. You go down the list of issues having to do with universal shared prosperity, and here's what you will find. Most of them get overwhelming approval from the public. An enormous majority of Americans wants affordable health care and affordable housing. An enormous majority wants secure retirement. An enormous majority thinks the minimum wage ought to be higher. You frame the questions that face us in a different way and suddenly you find that the very physics of politics have changed. Suddenly we are talking about enormous majorities for liberalism, not another disaster at the hands of this year's bigot.